entrepreneurship comes with its own dynamics, right? Uh, for one, I'd imagine, and I've interacted a lot with them, mentored quite a few. Uh, there's a lot of talk about entrepreneurship in college. There's a lot of interest, and rightly so. I'm very happy about that. Uh, but there is this issue of worldly exposure, exposure to the real life challenges, exposure to decision taking, the readiness to take decisions, the readiness to take on all the challenges and pitfalls that entrepreneurship throws your way. All right. So honestly, students are vulnerable. They're in a very tentative phase of life, but there is this aspiration to break out, start something, do something meaningful. So I think that's very beautiful, that universe, that microcosm is very beautiful. And that is what we will explore through questions and answers in this session. But for that, I invite Suresh Narasimha on stage. It's a pleasure to have you back here. Another friend of uh, BBLF, and uh, thankfully there are many of them. Please come, please. So Suresh is founder, co-creator ventures and CEO of JustBooks. How many of you here are JustBooks members? Oh, and me too. Great. That's such an excellent service, Suresh. Thank you so much. What? Could have done better. <laughs> <laughs> no. There was a question in your look. Mm -hmm. He's an idea stage investor in student startups and integrates CXOs with startups. He helps student entrepreneurs with all that they need you know, in the very practical terms, that is, all sorts of resources for so funding, uh, other resources, connections, etc., and mentoring, of course, to build the next big thing. He'll be in conversation with uh, two very interesting. I won't call them moderators, I'll call them, I don't know, uh, they're going to be asking him very needling questions, I hope, very troublesome questions. Uh, we have two student entrepreneurs here, yeah, for a change. So, I welcome on stage Anaya Jetanandani and Manya Singh. Come on. <laughs> Anaya is a student of grade 11 at Indus International School, Bangalore and an IB MYP Innovator Awardee. She is the founder of FinWin, an organization that aims to empower women by bridging the gender finance gap in our society. She conducts financial literacy workshops, very interesting, and organizes a mobile financial clinic, which just gets better and better, for marginalized women in their communities, thereby including them in the formal, uh, the fold of the formal financial sector. So, I think they need a lot of encouragement for the hard tasks, the meaningful tasks they've taken on. Manya is a startup youth student entrepreneur and founder of Incuba Nari, a non-profit committed to empowering the Indian woman on financial independence uh, by incubating their small business ventures and amplifying India's real stories of women's entrepreneurship. She's a recipient of the Maximum Individual MYP Innovator Grant towards her initiative and is passionate about leveraging entrepreneurship for a more equitable future. So looking forward to a great conversation. <laughs> Nothing can be more troublesome than someone not wanting to become an entrepreneur. Oh. <laughs> right. Wonderful. So I guess we'll start, Mr. Suresh, with uh, both of us that we'd start with questions surrounding our own ventures. Uh, so, Mr. Suresh, according to the Indian Ministry of Statistics, only 13% of entrepreneurs in India are women. This fact obviously exacerbates our existing level, like lower levels of female uh, women's economic participation. Uh, and it hinders our achievement of gender equality. My organization, Inkubanari, aims to empower Indian women through entrepreneurship. So I wanted to ask you, in your experience, what are the most important ways that we should and can support Indian women entrepreneurs? Okay, one other thing that I'm really, really proud of is that I have 28 student startups. 60% of them have women as co-founders, right? This is something which is... Uh, <laughs> I mean, this has been my statement wherever I go to. For the boys, right? I mean, most of my audience are the college students, those who are in third or fourth year. Boys, it's good to become an entrepreneur, right? So, in fact, it's the best choice for anyone is to become an entrepreneur. I can talk about it on and on. But for boys, it's good to become an entrepreneur. I went on to say, for girls, it's must to become an entrepreneur, right? So. Because you don't want after five, ten years, okay, may not be for you, for many of them, you don't want some joker to come and ask you to drop out of career, asking you to, I mean, uh, do things which you will not do, right? So, 
for me the belief is that if a girl becomes an entrepreneur no one will have the guts to ask her to drop out of her career because you are already employing around 100 people right so it's very very important for me so it's just that they need to go out and do it and best time to do is when you are in college because that's the only time where you really enjoy your freedom so become an entrepreneur when you are student and then the said i mean 13% will become 90% in no time all right Okay, so my question to you is based on. So I have an organization, Finwin. It's a social organization, but what we think is that uh, with limited resources that are provided for social organizations, how do we create a strategy to scale social initiatives and garner support as social impact does not offer commercial benefits? I mean, I think this is a very very big challenge, right? Probably, uh, I'm not the best of the impact uh, investors, right? I'm. Uh, uh the some of the companies that we have invested in are the impact ventures by definition because we are a lot more pure at heart when we are still studying right it could be the reason but uh i'm not the best guy to answer your question right it could be theoretical please excuse me for it but however i want to answer it i think one of the challenge social impact ventures have is that most of them find it very difficult to truly differentiate right so i am doing a great job similar to someone else who is doing in 50 meter, who is doing some work 50 meters away right by definition the problem that you are picking up is not scalable right the anything which is in the impact considering you need to work at a very low very low margin etc unless you really scale it up right commercially it won't make sense for the person who is running it beyond certain years that's where the energies will fall down and that's where all the challenges so my suggestion to impact ventures is you need to think lot more commercial about out uh, you need to think lot more commercial or you need to think of more finances than a normal entrepreneur right because you have it's not just a need but you have a responsibility right because you want to go and impact it becomes your responsibility to scale that impact so that it reaches lot more people right i mean i always say this even to researchers right if you are doing a research right it's your commitment or it's your responsibility to make sure that your research or the output of your research to masses right similarly impact ventures the biggest problem is you need to think of scale from day one you need to think of differentiation from day one then the rest of the stuff will happen yeah right it's not different from any other startup it's not different from any other venture if you start thinking like this but many times what happens as impact investor it's all about ourselves right so i mean you can't help it right because you are doing such a great work 30 40% of what you are trying to do is our own ego right our own the fact that i am trying to do that but just step outside the circle and think look at it as a pure business and see how it can scale right this is my suggestion okay sir thank you so much welcome So, sir, in your interview with your story, you mentioned that uh, startup founders or uh, aspiring founders should focus on solving complex founder uh, complex problems rather than just creating jugaad startups. Uh, what are some recent examples of real problem-solving ventures that CoCreate has helped uh, incubate and scale recently? So, I will tell you why not jugaad, right? I mean, he was talking about. I mean, uh, Ganesh was talking about. students not having uh, enough exposure and other stuff right but i look at it completely different right we don't have the half the intelligence or energy that these kids have or the we they don't have baggage that's a different issue right probably uh, that's uh, self imposed one they don't have baggage but they have lot better understanding the world than you and me have right i sit for i listen to at least four ideas every day right from all the colleges all the students i can assure you that two out of those four ideas even in my dreams i would not have thought about right because their understanding of the world their understanding of the life their understanding of the technology is so much different from what we understand right so i think if this is what i say the chances of anyone who is less than 21 building a unicorn is 20 times more than what chances i have or what any of us have right i mean that is true with you as right so go just go and look at all the great companies that are created right so whether it's facebook or whether it, all the great companies that you can think of from the us all of them most of them were started in the colleges by the students right most of them were started in the colleges by the student and today some of those executives from india went on to become ceos my question is what if sundar pichai could have 
uh, 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 build Google Chrome here, right? So was it the problem statement that was missing? Was it the resources that were missing? Was it the market that were missing? Probably all of them, but we have all of them now, right? So this is where I think, right, students, I mean, it's forget about all the challenges, etc. All those things can be fixed, but here is the best time and great opportunity for them. Coming down to the Jugaad solution, I really feel pain when we go and tell students that, I mean, anything is an innovation. You are setting a wrong example. Make them think hard. Make them think deeper, right? You can't just think Jugaad and build global unicorn or you can't build grow, grow globally great companies by thinking Jugaad, right? While this is good, that's in our blood, but I want to make sure that all students are, all youngsters think deeper, right? They try to pick up more complex problem. They try to solve, they try to create a solution which is which has a lot more differentiation, right? That's the reason. Okay. And you ask me for some examples, right? I'll I can go on. Okay. I mean, I believe all the 28 companies that we have invested in have strong uh, deep uh, deep tech innovations. For example, I will uh, give you some examples, right? One of the uh, few extremes, right? There are three girls who are working on variables for the pets right wearable for the pets right with the whole idea of increasing lifespan of any of our pets by one to one and a half years right is it not a, a great solution to have if you have a pet right so that's a, the three girls right into uh, this one there is a team which is working on all of us hate bangalore rains right i'm mean, forget about the traffic etc right doesn't rain now but in five minutes it will rain like crazy right and you leave the home it's not raining you go to the next round in next road it starts raining there right so I mean, Bangalore weather is unpredictable, like many city, many other cities. So there are three kids who lost their all electronic components because of this problem, once they were going to eat. So they thought, why don't we build a solution which will give hyper-local, highly accurate weather information, right, for our next six months with a 15 minutes granularity, right? So they went and built a whole weather station at less than $100, right? Built a whole weather station at less than $100, wherein all their competitors are trying to launch satellites by spending billions of dollars to solve the same problem, right? These kids have already deployed it in cricket stadium, football stadiums, hockey stadiums, right? They are working with a lot of power generation students. Uh, this one, because Ryan has a huge impact on them, right? This is one more company, right? Third company, I want to take this example because very, very close to her, my heart, right? So we think, uh, Ganesh, for uh, we talking about uh, the exposure, right? I want you to listen to this example, yeah. right? Four kids, Haveri, Chitradurga, Davangere, and Mandya, right? Two of them studied in Karana medium till 10th, right? And in fact, two of those students probably uh, uh, from the lower sections of the society, they are still in government hostels. I'm not sure how many of you have ever met anyone who has studied in government hostels in the last 10 years, right? This is the background of the kids. The problem that they are trying to solve is they are trying to solve zero collateral crypto loans. Zero collateral crypto loans is what the, is the problem that they are trying to solve. We can't understand crypto. We can't understand zero collateral, right? So, I mean, zero. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, I have put them in front of coins with Kudera CEO, who is my friend. And he, he said, Suresh will go out for a smoke after 30 minutes. And then he said, Suresh, are you joking? Are you sure these guys are third year engineering students who are not from the finance background, right? So I think it's just that give them support, give them support, give them confidence, give them mentoring. They will be able to come out with what we can't even dream of, right? So is the Arsene Thank you, sir. So I absolutely agree with you. I do believe that as our students, we have to take advantage of our opportunity that we don't have any baggage on us and we can actually break out of the bubble and explore opportunities and make the best use out of them. But coming to my next question, the biggest challenge we face as students is creating credibility on our initiatives. So what would be your advice to overcome this challenge? So I think it's a myth, right? It's a myth. I don't think, right? So in fact, um, Initially, right, uh, some of my companies sell it to principals, right? The assumption that we have is when a student or a when, when an youngster goes to principals and tries to sell it to him, principal treats him as any other solution. So, which is the credibility point that we are talking? We said, okay, let's experiment out. You have built something as cool as, uh, let's say, something in the blockchain. Anyway, people on the other side may not understand what you are talking about. 
but don't worry go there fix up a meeting go and talk to them and just share your passion don't even sell your solution share your passion or what you are trying to do right and invariably that gives the great results right i think it's just a myth that myth that we don't have credibility right the good thing is you don't have any negative credibility right you don't you are not a credibility loss right which is the situation with 95% of the people will go and sell it right so i think it's a myth just have confidence and go out and rock is basically what, sell our vision sell our passion. sell our vision right so as a founder that's what you should do right okay. just go and try why you are doing this right okay. that's good enough right so you that gives you instant credibility in fact someone who is working the impact ventures last thing they need to worry about is the credibility yeah. right you are better than 99% of us right or i am not even trying to think about some impact right so okay sir yes that makes sense yes that makes a lot of sense thanks any questions from the audience we can take i think just two we have time for that yes hi so my name is aditya i am in grade 11 with them i am in indus as well so you said in the beginning that what could i have done better when you uh, when you're talking to ganesh sir so my question for you is if you could talk to your younger self when you had started your journey in investment and entrepreneurship what advice would you give nothing yaar i would have done lot more i mean i think pretty much i'm one of those lucky guys who did whatever i wanted to do right so i was the fool, i was fool enough to go and acquire just books when if i had not acquired it would have closed right so i put in all that this one and so i just do what i really thought i should do right i became a an entrepreneur when entrepreneurship was a taboo i still remember okay in 2005 6 i used to go to colleges for example mounts i go there for the speech and sell them it was very hard for startups at that time to hire right so i used to go and request them a if you can't become an entrepreneur at least join a startup if you can't join a startup at least get a guy who is going to start up right so <laughs> yeah i was a versa okay <laughs> right sorry <laughs> right so i mean uh, this i mean i was lucky enough right so i have all the i mean i have taken lot more risk right but one point i want to tell right so uh, sorry taking away time from questions right i said it's best thing for an youngster to become is the entrepreneur so i'm telling with complete consciousness right because if you just go and do a search for file entrepreneur in your linkedin right some of you have the linkedin right you will be amazed at the number of responses you get so today we as a society we respect people who have tried something even if they have failed right that any most of the companies that i know will give you a premium if you have tried something and even if you have failed right so your career is always safer once you try something in the entrepreneurship right your career is not at risk right b the best thing to do this is do it when you are in college no i mean if you are an if you are an start it in the penultimate year so that before you get to the final year when your classmates are busy applying for the higher education or busy applying for the campus recruitment make an offer saying that why don't you come and join me okay, right so i mean i said 28 startups right at least 28 startups out of which around seven startups are by the students who are right now in the final year engineering right and each of them right i'm not even saying an exception each of them are in discussion with a term sheet to raise around 1 1 1/2 million dollars at a valuation of 6 7 million dollars right each company have two three co-founders right which means each minimum they own is 25% just imagine 25% of 50 million dollar 50 crores right which is 7.5 10 crore no job can offer you that right and if they don't get that still there are enough acquire opportunities by which they make a much better returns so my request to all the elders here is if someone wants to become a entrepreneur right don't even try to add your maturity to him and don't even add him to all all your risk mitigation strategies on him please allow him to go and do that they know what they need to do right so is there so uh, mm-hmm. suresh this since this uh, uh, business literature festival tell us a little about your this books journey why you acquired and what is the motivation behind reviving it it's very inspiring so i think there are see i mean most entrepreneurs right in fact one of the thing that i suggest all entrepreneurs is before students who are in their first year please go and work in an ngo or not for profit organization right first thing you can't find any entrepreneur who doesn't want to give back right you will not find any entrepreneur right you will not find any entrepreneur who doesn't want to give back and you will not find any entrepreneur who is not an avid reader these two are guaranteed here just to set the context here 
so i mean i i mean i sold my just books i sold my monkey box etc and normally the whole idea is okay let me make my 100 million and then go and donate 20 million is the normally the way all of us think about it right so then i got frustrated and then thought that let me go and do my bit on the ventures that i am really passionate about which are which i feel believe are worth surviving that's where i started a fund earlier version of this fund whole idea is to go and invest in startups that are worth surviving right which have a social cause just books came to my radar right and if i had not i mean it was in a stage in which if you had not invested it would have closed down right huge losses etc etc so that's where we took uh, just books and unfortunately we couldn't even do the due diligence right and then in terms of the what's happening there right so franchise system etc right but i just believed that this is an idea which was worth surviving at whatever the cost it is so we just went in did that just books and uh, we were very very lucky to do some transformation and by uh, in fact by on 2020 march okay i mean just to tell you 2020 march we were uh, on the first 15 days of march which is our core period we had done 3x the revenue of previous march right we had we thought we had cracked it we had done extremely well right so and then uh, we really will be able to scale the whole uh, you know we started talking to government because we wanted to take this to government schools we started doing whatever we wanted to do and then covid hit us which uh, took two years away from us but happy that we are still surviving though not at the level or not at the service levels that i want to right because there are a lot of just books customers it becomes my duty to apologize to them that i know that our service levels may not be as good as it should be right hopefully we'll pick it up we'll come back and then do a much better job at this in fact one thing which i am very this one i want to share is we are launching something known as bay which is peer to peer book lending right if you have books just come and list it on the just books right if others are looking for the same books we'll manage the logistics and other things we don't take any cut right it's still on the subscription as just books we don't take any cut right whatever you define is what they will pay and this is the, one of the new thing that we are launching and uh, and one more thing that we are trying to do is to we have built a platform which we are just giving it out for free to all the communities if you have a readers club please run it on this it's free of charge we just i mean that's the whole purpose right you can have i mean this has pretty much everything you need to manage an active and healthy community whether it's bblf community or whether it's apartment community or whether it's the uh, community around specific stuff this is just a reader club right network of readers club is what we are trying to create so my core revenue comes from books rental sir that's what we do are the subscription right so on the bay right this we are doing more as a brand extension and we are build the software we are just uh, it's more like a open source strategy yeah one last question we have time for and we have to move on no is there any okay this is really okay actually students should come and talk to me later yeah. <laughs> that's it. um so hi sir um i'm ashut prasanna and i'm from um in this as well and from startup you and i'm in the ninth grade so i've got an idea for a startup um to help the visually impaired with navigating their lives and with their education but because i'm just a student especially in the ninth grade i'm often not taken seriously and that makes it hard to gain traction and get funding So what would you say could be done to just mentor and financially support um more student startups on a larger scale See first I am not a big believer in students dropping out of their schools and colleges and building the business yeah. right that's not I think that's an exception I'm not a big believer right I mean as much as I love the energy that you have I love the idea the problem that you are picking up etc my suggestion to you is continue your research if possible come and intern with a startup for 2 3 hours right or a, i mean like, come and start doing intern with that uh, and just love the fact that you can build something don't even get to the complexity of building the business just love the fact that you can build something right go and build the software go and put it on the app store go and put it on the websites understand how to build stuff right give it 2 3 years you will become a much better entrepreneur right, right. all right, all right so we'll have to wrap up now this is uh, extremely interesting And I just wish I could work with a lot of students and their questions. I don't think we're going to get to have lunch. So if you want to spend all your time answering questions, it's been very great. But I think we'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for your answers. Thanks for the wonderful questions from the audience and from Anya.
Thanks a lot. So, so I give this uh, someone. Yeah. So while I give out, I just want to share my model. So what we do is, if you like the idea by the students, we'll commit up to two hundred thousand dollars at the wow. idea stage, right? So and we take for a minority, for a minority equity, it's a pure equity play. That's what. Wish you can be student for next sixty years. <laughs>